Yes, Marjorie. Yes. Let me angle the camera. Down like this. So you can say hello. Hello. Pet me, please. Don't record your podcast. Just pet me. Give me all your love and attention. You want to tell everyone how excited you are for spring? everyone and welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. If you're a new viewer, welcome and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's the beginning of March and I need to film my February makes episode. So here we are today getting this film on a sunny day in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I live in Washington State in the United States in the Seattle area and it's the end of winter <laughs> transitioning into the beginning of spring which means we are um, slowly moving out of the rainy season into more cloudy, sunny, partly sunny days without precipitation. Today is one of those days, although I think next week we'll be back to rain again. I guess it's transitioning, but we're getting some of those sunny days popping in a little more frequently, so today is a great day to record to try to capture those colors on screen and really be able to see them. So. I'm excited to share with you today what I managed to create in the month of February. So a couple of things before we dive into what I made in February. Uh, first of all is that every month I give away something here on the channel and it's in these videos where I recap what I made in a calendar month. Um, so that will be at the end of this video, so stick around to the end to find out who will win in this episode and how to participate for the next upcoming giveaway. Uh, I am running them on monthly cycles, so it gives folks lots of time to be able to watch this video and participate uh, until the next video comes out. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. The second thing is, um, I'm not wearing any knits, no, I lie, I am wearing a hand knit today, it's my socks. <laughs> um, we came home from church and um, we joined the choir actually, so we stayed for choir practice, which was really fun, and, um, but yeah, I had on a shawl under my wool coat and my hand knit socks on um, because of uh, COVID protocols here in Washington state we uh, still have to wear masks indoors um, and so you know churches and schools and restaurants and everyone's kind of got their own little thing going on for protocols that they have to follow in order to be open anyway um, so the doors are open at church with fans to have good airflow so we all pretty much stay bundled up during church service <laughs> especially today it was pretty chilly so um yeah, but now that we're back home, I'm drinking some hot tea. Uh, I just have on some socks. They're just uh, plain vanilla socks. Um, 
red and black ones. I think... No, this is not my hand dyed yarn. This is um, Pix yarn. I'm drinking some of that sweet, sweet and spicy cinnamon. Hot cinnamon spice tea. Ooh. Harney and Sons. It's delicious. I put um, a link to it because I bought it on Amazon. I put a link to it. I think it was in the last video in the description box. I'd be really curious to know if any of you tried it. Um, and you don't, I'm not affiliated with Amazon. I don't get anything if you order it through them or whatever. Um, I just thought it'd be useful to put a link to the very item that I purchased in case anyone was interested. And so I'd be curious to know if anyone tried that tea and what they thought of it. If you did try it, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. <laughs> if not, not a big deal. Anyway. So February's been really busy. Um, I teach for a living. I teach at a uh, two-year college. We also offer four-year degrees, but it's still primarily a two-year college. And in February, we um, moved from remote instruction uh, to some of us going back to teaching in the classroom. So it was early February. February 7th was our first day back on campus. And as you can imagine, there is a transition period that comes with that where it feels like day one of the term all over again, you're having to figure out where to go and uh, classroom etiquette, hallway etiquette, the rules for where you can and cannot park and where you can and cannot be in buildings and all of that great stuff. So um, it took probably a week, couple weeks for us to finally settle into a routine. So now that, you know, February is over, it's the beginning of March now, we've gotten into those routines. People know how far apart they need to be and we're all wearing our masks consistently. And oh, anyway, so it was, I, I wouldn't call it a stressful time, but a busy time just answering lots of questions and taking good questions to, uh, you know, further up the chain to, fig to figure things out. So it's been busy, is what I'm trying to say. I did not think this month was going to be as busy as it really was at work. Uh, but now that I look back, we've done a lot. <laughs> We've gone, we've gone through a lot and we've done a lot and I really can't say enough good things about my students um, in their adaptability and flexibility and um, such good questions and considerations they have for each other and this whole situation. So it's been a journey. Um, I did manage to finish one thing this month. And it's not even really a finished thing. It's one of many. Yeah, so I have not done much in the way of crafting this month because it, 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 I've been consumed by work and just the whole transition. So <laughs> what I did manage to finish uh, is one skein of the yarn. So I spun this uh, and this is for my um, vest project where I'm taking the wool through the whole uh, process. Um, I guess I wasn't there when it came off the sheep. <laughs> Right. Um, so back here is very true to color on the screen. When I bring it closer, it uh, the brightness changes and it kind of blows out the colors. But if you see back here, this is this is how it looks, people. It <laughs> looks amazing. I love it so much. Um, but yeah, I bought it off a lady a couple of years ago. Um, it had you know already come off the sheep. Uh, and it had been stored in uh, plastic garbage bags and 
Um, so I brought it home. It sat in storage for a while, uh, washed it, combed it, dyed it, um, combed it again, put it on a blending board, uh, and spun it. And here we are. So, yes, this is 89 yards, I believe. It is worth it, but on the bulky side. So it's a bit thicker than I need it to be for my project. So I'm at a pausing point. I did not spin more, uh, mainly because I wanted to show you the skein. But I think what I'm going to do is um, uh, wind this up into a ball and knit a sample for the pattern that I'm following. And the pattern that I'm going to use uh, to knit an object, the whole point is to go from the fluffy, dirty wool to a garment. And the garment I'm wanting to create out of this is the Librarian Vest by Skandir Knits. And the pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn. So I'm going to um, make a sample out of this basically and see how it works up. Is my yarn too thick, which I suspect it is, or is it actually okay? I have no idea. Yeah, so I'm kind of at a pausing point there. The spin itself started out very challenging. Um, I have a video where I take you through my, my wool prep, if you will, uh, with the colors, uh, the dyeing the, dyeing the colors and, and blending them together and, and talking about the, those considerations with the plies and things. Um, so I put the colors on the blending board and I dizzed them off the blending board and it turns out, um, the colors were still staying pretty separate where I'd get like a patch of teal and then a patch of green instead of the two of them being together. It just did not draft as well as I thought it was going to. So I ended up, um, combing them so um, I'm gonna have to do another video about that because it did not work out as I thought it would and that happens all of the time Let, let's be honest right this um as much as I want to treat this like a science I don't know everything about all of these fibers and the different preps and how things work together so um what I love is that I I'm not a master of this topic and there is still more for me to explore and learn. So I thought my fiber prep was going to work a certain way. It did not work that way. It worked a different way, but I want it to work this way. So I found um, another way. So yeah, I took the, um, let me just grab that real quick. I've got a little bit here. So yeah, I when I dissed the colors off the blending board, it still kept them separate because I want the ply, each ply to still have the barber polling and then ply together and just look really dense and rich. Um, anyway, so this was not, uh, it was not drafting as easily as I wanted it to. I kept getting thick and thin with my spinning and I, I would like a more consistent yarn. So um, I decided, well, I guess this is still too much of a woolen prep coming off the blending board. I think I need more of a worsted prep to go with my worsted spin. So I took this and I just loaded it on the combs. And so now it's, more blended. So you can see here, the colors are still very separate and here they are more blended. Now I say more blended, it's still not like exactly blended, right? Uh, there's still some color separation here, so that's okay. 
but um, but I needed the fibers to be a little bit more aligned. This Carrie Hill, I don't know if you can see, but it's very um, not straight. <laughs> it is not a straight wool, and I mean, it's very soft and fluffy, and I love it. So I don't really need the woolen prep. Like, it's already really, it's really got that in the fiber. So... So I'm not going to have as separate of color showing up as before. That's okay. I need, I need it to spin out to a yarn that I want to have ultimately. Um, so the yarn structure is going to take precedent over color here. But all those colors are going to show up. You can see it here. Um, this has that kind of prep in it. And you can you can see the colors that I have light green and dark green and black and teal you can see that in there so it's fine it's working out just fine um but yeah I think it's a little on the thick side so I need to do a swatch uh before I spin more um and just see where I'm at so that's where I am with that project. I did begin spinning, but I'm at a pausing point because I'm not sure I'm getting the yarn I need, which is a bummer, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm learning and exploring. So basically everything is still a work in progress, even though, even though I did like finish a skein, like I said, I still need to spin everything else. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna have enough. I don't have enough wool prepped. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to wash and dye more for this project. So <laughs> I'm nowhere near finished on that thing and that's okay. Um, the other big project I'm working on is a sweater. And so, uh, the yarns are all detached. I'm at a really nice pausing point. Um, and the yarns I'm using are, these two are Knit Picks Palette in Ash and, is the other one called Charcoal? I don't think it is. <laughs> it looks like charcoal. It's, it's Ash and, nope. Ash and Ash, no. Mist. <laughs> okay, so this is Ash and this is Mist. And they're both Knit Picks palette. And then this is a silk blend in a nice light grayish blue. And so, where can I set these down? <laughs> On the floor. <laughs> So it's creating this beautiful fabric when combining them in this pattern, which is, ah, I love it. It's going to look so nice. Uh, so this is, the pattern is called Mellow by Camilla Vaud, and it is knit flat. It's a cardigan, so, it's, uh, so it has an open front. It's knit flat from the bottom up. And so I have finished the body. Um, nothing is sewn together. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so here is, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> One moment. So, it is an open front cardigan. It is knit flat. So, um, you're seeing the wrong side here, uh, the inside of the back, and then here's the right side of the front. So, I did finish the other front panel and the back. So... The instructions at this point 
are going to have me work on the sleeves. So the sleeves are also knit flat. And I think, I think it's gonna start at the wrists and then increase up, work it flat. And then I'll have to sew up the sleeve into a tube and then sew the sleeve on here and sew this together up here and do the same thing over there. And then there's also a, um, the edging here. So there's around the collar, it's gonna match the edging down here. I wanna call it a button band, but there are no buttons on this cardigan. So it's the, the border, the trimming, the edging, uh, like a button band, but without buttons, right? Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, this project is just so um, brain consuming. And while I really enjoy stimulating my brain, I have that spinning project over there stimulating my brain. I have work stimulating my brain. I have... <laughs> I have so many things that are just, um, I don't really have many mindless tasks, the things I can just um, do. I do have some like gardening, you know, sowing seeds and stuff is, I don't have to really think about it. Um, but this, this is one of those projects that I have to think about quite a bit. And the reason I have to do that is because I'm, made all these yarn substitutions and then my stitch counts didn't quite match. So I did some math to reconfigure the numbers. So I'm at that point where I have to reconfigure the numbers for the sleeves because I can't, I'm not just using the same stitch count in the pattern because it's only written for what, three or four sizes. Anyway, <laughs> So I have to do that, reconfigure those numbers before I can start this leave. So I'm at a pausing point here, but hey, I got the body done. Now, I can't let this linger and die because um, while I am taking notes about my numbers, I don't think they're good enough notes that if I let this sit for two years, I could pick it back up. They're definitely not good enough notes for that. So I need to make sure I keep going on this or else this will just be a, a total waste. And I really don't want that because I, I want this finished garment. There have been so many times when I'm getting ready in the morning for work that I'm like, you know what would go perfect with this outfit? That cardigan that I'm still working on. <laughs> so I need to finish this. I need to keep going on this so that I can finish it. That's what I'm trying to say, is I can't let this just fizzle out and be something that sits in the corner for 20 years. So I want it in my closet and have me wearing it for 20 years. <laughs> yep. So last time I showed you a sock that I was working on for a pattern. And so... Um, so I got all the way down here to closing the toe and I didn't, I ripped the needles out. <laughs> um, yep. So I told you I was playing around with color and texture and I wasn't totally happy. <laughs> I was not totally happy with this. Um, I don't know. It just feels like the ribbing is fighting with this pattern. Um, so I redesigned it. Uh, I did not rip this out because I wasn't totally confident that my redesign would go somewhere meaningful. But now my redesign has gone somewhere meaningful. 
and that redesign, of course, I took to work with me on Friday thinking, oh, I'll knit in the car on the way to work. But I drove, and then I drove on the way home as well. Michael and I carpooled together. I didn't knit in the car, and I certainly didn't knit at work, and I left it at work. Today is Sunday, and my this redesign is at work on a shelf somewhere for no good reason at all. Anyway, so... <laughs> So I do like where my redesign has gone. So folks, I am to the point where I am, um, I wrote up the pattern instructions for the, for the stitch, uh, the, the pattern stitch that I'm creating. I did write that up and I am knitting it out right now. <laughs> um, I did start another one. But this is my February makes video. I did this in February, started the redesign in February. That redesign is at work. I was tempted to drive all the way back just to go get it. And then I was like, no, that's not a good use of fuel and time. So just don't <laughs> just, just show it next time. It'll be fine. Um, so yesterday I, I, <laughs> I picked two new colors out of my stash and started working it up with those. So I will have um, uh, two solid colors to showcase and a solid color with a variegate. So it'll be interesting to compare those two and how they look in this pattern stitch. Uh, but I don't want to show it in this video because it, it counts for March. Let's pretend it's still February. <laughs> In this video um, plus spoilers I still might change things about the design because I don't have everything planned out but that's why I am knitting a sock right now out of it is now that I figured out the pattern stitch let's figure out how all of that works in a sock design um, so that's what I'm working on. And this is going to get ripped out. I'm going to rip this out. Start over. Um, I probably, <laughs> I probably won't even recast this on. I don't think I'll use these two yarns to do that pattern stitch again. Um, so I will just rip this out and make something else. <laughs> Yeah, so again, something that requires me to be thinking and planning ahead and making decisions. So, yeah. But I finally got to a good place. Now I'm in a rhythm where it is just following my own pattern and mindless knitting. And I finally got to that point. I was just a matter of cresting that mountain. And now it's just all downhill from here. So I did post uh, on Instagram yesterday, this morning, one of these two days, um, that I will be calling for testers at the end of the month. So I just want to put that on folks' radar. If you are interested in test knitting for me, I will do a call on, I think on Instagram. Um, and so I'll post pictures of what the socks look like and then call for testers so you can get an idea of what you might be testing <laughs> um, and then I'll just take you know a couple of volunteers um, to knit those up in a couple of sizes and just make sure that all my counts work out and that the pattern was um, easy to follow that I wasn't missing any instructions and that kind of thing um, and I, I really appreciate folks who are willing to proofread and test out those patterns for me, especially in a time where I feel like I am being pulled in six different directions and I um, sometimes miss details, which is not great to do. So anyway, so I spun 89 yards of yarn 
I finished the body of a cardigan. Yay! And I finished a sock and plan to rip it completely out and have none of that yardage count. So, <laughs> okay. And so that's where I'm at with my crafting. It's just that. So it's been interesting <laughs> these past few weeks here in the state of Washington. Um, our indoor mask mandate, according to the governor, uh, is going to lift March 11th. It was the 21st. Now I think it's the 11th. But each county can also decide their own thing. And King County is where I live. It's the county with Seattle, and Bellevue, and so many places in it. Um, King County doesn't want to remove the indoor mask mandate, and neither does the mayor of Seattle. So it's like, it's, it's not just one level of government to keep track of. It's, it's the state, the county, the city, and then, and then, and then the industry, right? And so I'm in higher education. So what does higher education say about, <laughs> it's just, oh, I say interesting, but it's like, I have to tap into four different sources of information to figure out what is happening uh, to what is going to change in my you know, when I go to work, do I need to wear my mask or can I take it off? Because honestly, folks, um, I'm, I'm all for protecting, protecting each other and safety, but it is really hard to breathe in that thing when I'm up lecturing in front of 30 people, um, trying to project my voice across the room. And there have been a couple days, honestly, where I had to leave the classroom and leave the building and go outside and just take my mask off and catch my breath because I was just struggling for oxygen. And it was just, it was not super disruptive for class. I think mostly people were like, what is she doing? And then I came back and told them and then they kind of looked at me like, I was being overly dramatic, but, um, you know, I have asthma and there are just some times where I have a hard time catching my breath and it happened a couple times while teaching and that had never happened to me while teaching before. Um, and it's because that, um, mask and sometimes too, it feels like, um, each mask is a little different too on the airflow. So, you know, I'll, I wear those um, disposable single use surgical masks. And um, even just pulling from the same box, sometimes the masks are um, like the elastics really tight on one of them. And then the next one, it's super loose. And yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm excited and hopeful for the day when we can uh, be in the classroom without masks on. Um, I don't know that that day is going to come this school year. I would wager a fair amount of money <laughs> that that will not happen until next school year after summer. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I have to look at four different things to figure out what's going on. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, anyway, so that's where we are at. Um, we can, as of right now, go to outdoor events without masks on, like the baseball games or soccer games or things like that. Um, like the Mariners, the Sounders, the Seahawks. You know, you can go to those outdoor sporting events and not have to wear a mask. So we do have that. Um, but indoor stuff, still got to have one on at least until mid-March. So if you are visiting in the area, um, you know, just be prepared for that. 
uh, Michael and I went to the mall yesterday and there were a lot of people walking around the mall without masks on, indoor mall. And so each store that you went into, um, the, the, the salespeople were constantly having to give people masks. Um, like, you know, we still have a mask policy, right? And no, I'm from out of town. And so, yeah, so each of the stores had to be enforcing the mask policy as opposed to, you know, someone at the mall entrance or whatever. So it was, oh, it was interesting. I don't know what the word, interesting is not the word, but it was just something I observed yesterday. Um, it's good to see folks are traveling, maybe visiting family, getting out and seeing the sights. Um, I know that's part of what uh, drew me to this area is that there are a lot of things to do and see around here. So I'm happy that folks are starting to do that again. Um, appreciate and, you know, enjoy and you know, support our local businesses that have been really struggling. So it was, it was nice to get out and do that. We went to a, um, there are game shops, like board games and um, video games, but I'm mostly talking about board games. Um, like Michael and I got into playing Dungeons and Dragons. So we're going to different like board game shops and looking at those things. And a bunch of them have gone out of business during this pandemic. So we're really trying to go and support them so that they can stay open. <laughs> so, uh, so it was good to see folks around. Um, I'm doing that. The stores were really busy, so that's good. Anyway, I am just rambling at this point. So let me... Um, pull up last month's video so that I can pick a winner for the giveaway. Okay, so last month's video was the January makes, and so I took the URL and put it over here in the YouTube random comment picker, and there are all your ads for you. Yay! Um, so there's the URL. So we had five comments on that video, and now we will randomly choose a winner. Are you ready? This is the fun part. Vicki! Yay! Vicki Shaw is our winner this time. So my question was about doing a live stream on the channel and so Vicky says I personally don't watch live streams but I'd watch it later if that's the way you prefer to do it I just like seeing what you're working on thank you Vicky I know I usually miss live streams too it's just so hard to coordinate schedules <laughs> oh, life is too hard um <laughs> but yes thank you Vicky so Vicky um let me switch the camera around yeah <laughs> So Vicki, you have won a pattern of your choice off of Ravelry uh, up to a $10, that's US dollar value. Um, so any pattern off of Ravelry that you've had your eye on that you want to purchase or maybe it's something coming up soon, uh, just shoot me a private message on Ravelry and I will buy that pattern for you. Um, yeah. So my uh, username on Ravelry is down below in the description box. It is Knits 2 uh, Feel free to friend me, but basically all you need to do is send me a message saying which pattern you would like me to buy for you. Uh, and I'd be happy to do that. Um, so we're going to do online pattern giveaways for a little while. Um, just out of... Um, you know, COVID precautions and also uh, shipping things has been a hassle for a lot of folks. And so this way it can be a prize you get quickly, which I know is a, a big perk of winning a giveaway is if you don't have to wait a month for it or something. So, <laughs> so let me know um, what you would like, Vicki, and I will purchase that for you. So speaking of which, I need to tell you about the next giveaway. 
So, uh, to enter into the giveaway for next month, all you have to do is comment on this video. So this time I am not going to give you a prompt. I just want you to write a comment. It could be anything. It could be saying hello. It could be suggestions about what you want to see in the channel or what you're working on, anything like that. Um, the only, um, consideration to keep in mind with comments is that when I've asked folks to provide links in the past, um, like links to patterns on Ravelry, uh, YouTube deleted those comments thinking it had uh, explicit content in it. No one linked to like an explicit inappropriate pattern on Ravelry, so I don't know what YouTube is thinking. But so in your comments, maybe leave the links out so that your comment doesn't get deleted. But if you want to share names of patterns and where you found them, I would highly encourage that. Um, it's really nice to be able to share that um, information with each other. That's how I learn about a lot of new patterns is from you guys. So I encourage you to share. But basically, just leave a comment, any comment down below on this video. And next month, <laughs> in the March Makes video, I will draw a random winner, and that person will win a pattern off of Ravelry of your choosing up to a $10 US dollar value. So it could be a pattern by any designer out there, something you've had your eye on, something you just found, um, and then you'll just message me and let me know which one, and I'll buy it for you. <laughs> All right, folks, I think that's it. That's, I mean, that really is it. So I need to edit this video and get it posted up on YouTube and then go grade more tests because the work never stops around here. <laughs> all right, I appreciate you all. I'm so glad you could be here with me. I look forward to more videos in the future now that things are settling down at work. So uh, be safe. Be well and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. Bye.